Hey, what's going on everyone? I just finished building these four foot bookshelves for my kids. We had a bookshelf that we weren't really using at all and we had empty space on this wall. We wanted a way for our kids to see the books that they were reading, so I decided to build a bookshelf. Here's how I did it. You can make this entire project with one sheet of plywood that's two feet by four feet. After using a straight edge and a circular saw to get the sheet to the right size, I wanted to put the factory edge against the table saw fence and run the other side through the table saw so I could work with two straight sides. I wanted the bookshelves to be five and a half inches deep, so here I'm running three pieces through the table saw at five and a half inches, and these would be the bottom of the bookshelves. After that, I cut some more plywood at five and a half inches to make the sides of the bookshelves, and these would be cut at the miter saw. For the height of the sides, I wanted them to be about five and a quarter inches. I didn't want them to be a perfect square. So here I'm just making my measurements and cutting them on the miter saw. It's always helpful to use a stop block when you can so you can ensure that you get the same cut for every piece. Now that those cuts were done, it was time to bring it over to the bandsaw. Now I wanted the side pieces to have a round look to them on the top, so I found a furniture pad and I used them to help draw a circular shape. And then I took them over to the bandsaw. Now it wasn't really necessary to use a bandsaw because I could have just sanded them, which I eventually did, but I just got this bandsaw off of Facebook Marketplace and really wanted to give it a go. As you can see though, the cuts didn't come out the best, so I clamped them together, used my random orbit sander at 80 grit, and knocked it down until they were flush. Quite honestly, that was a lot easier than the bandsaw, but my bandsaw technique needs some work. Next, it was time to cut the back piece of the bookshelf, and this would serve as a brace for the bookshelf that would also be connected to the side pieces. This is what would really hold the bookshelf to the studs. Next up was the front piece. What's 1.75 divided by 3? It's about 0 0.5833. With some quick math using Siri, I set my table saw to a little over half an inch to cut these strips that would serve as a front piece for the bookshelf. Now because these were so thin, I decided to cut them almost three quarters of the way, flip them over, and cut the other side. That first cut with the push stick was a little too close for my liking. After all that cutting, it was time for assembly. Before screwing and gluing everything together, I wanted to lay down everything that I had and do dry assembly. So to do this, I laid out all the pieces that I had, got out a long clamp, and clamped everything together to see how it would look and make sure that everything was square. Now my face might not look like it, but everything looked good. So then it was time for some sanding. Since the 3 quarter inch birch I was working with was already relatively smooth, I ran over all the pieces with 220 grit on my random orbit sander. Next it was time to drill some pilot holes and countersink them, and I'd be using inch and a quarter long screws to join these together. I also enlisted the help of this right angle clamp to make sure that everything was square. After all the pre-drilling, I took some wood glue, and it was time to assemble these things together. Generally, I'm lazy and I don't pre-drill holes, but since I was drilling into the end grain of plywood, I'm really glad that I ended up pre-drilling all these holes. After that, I cleaned out all the dry glue squeeze out, and then it was time to move on to assembling the front piece of the bookshelf. To install the front piece, I basically used a stop lock to make sure that I had the same height on all my pieces, and then I used a combination square to make sure I could get the right measurement for the center of that piece, and then I went over to the side, used that same measurement, pre-drilled from the side, and then drilled at it. After taking out the stop block and repeating this process on the other side, I realized that the front piece, because it was so thin and because it was also really long, it was not very stable. So I took some of the offcuts, made a measurement to cut on the miter saw so I could make a piece that would be glued right in the middle. After that, I busted out my tape measure to find the very middle of the bookshelf, marked it, and then I glued and clamped this center piece in. Now after doing that for the front piece, I decided why the heck not do for the back. So then I ran through the exact same process that I did with the front pieces, only did it with a little bit of the thicker offcuts. Now I almost went on to sanding and finishing, but then I ran into a little bit of a problem. I realized that things would slip out of this bookshelf really easily if there wasn't a front lip. Things like kids books. To fix this, I cut some really thin strips of plywood down to serve as a front lip and then I would pin nail them with one inch pin nails. After using the pin nailer, there were probably two or three nails that stuck out that were just a little proud from the surface. To fix that, I just used a clamp, clamped it around where the nail was, tightened it, loosened it, and then it was flush. 
Before I could move on to the finishing stage, I took some wood filler and filled up all the screw holes as well as just random cracks or little holes that were left in the wood. Now I really recommend being really thorough and where you put wood filler because I've had one too many projects in the past where I thought, oh, no one's really gonna notice that. But when you apply finish, everything is magnified. So take the time, wood fill all the holes that you need to to ensure that you get the best finish you can get. After letting the wood filler dry, I hit up everything with 220 grit sandpaper and then used my air compressor to get everything ready for finish. For finish, I'm using a couple coats of Verithane's water-based polyurethane. One thing I love about using this water-based poly is by the time I'm done applying finish to all three of the bookshelves, the first one that I started would already be dry and then it was very quick to sand and then reapply. Once all my finish was applied, I went over everything with 400 grit sandpaper to make sure everything felt super smooth to the touch. Now some people might say you only need to sand up to 220 grit, but when I sand up to 400, it makes a big difference to me. Here's how everything looked after applying finish and sanding. Now the last thing was to bring them into the house and mount them up. Now the gap between the window and the closet in the space was four feet two inches, so it fit perfectly. To begin the mounting process, the first thing that I had to do was use my stud finder and find and mark all the studs in the wall. Then I transfer those marks over to the back brace and then I countersunk holes into them. Next was to mount this in level, so my wife helped hold this up with the leveler while I drilled these screws in. And last but not least, it was time to give these books a home. These bookshelves are rock solid and hold almost all the kids' books that we own. Most importantly though, our kids love it. And I love that they get to have such easy access to their books. I mean, if that dancing doesn't say excitement, I don't know what does. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed.